Hey, we'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsor, Isotope, makers of software and plugins for audio repair, mixing, and mastering. We use Isotope products here at the High Gain. It's an important part of how we've been able to bottle pure podcast gold week after week. And guess what? Isotope offers one free month of Music Production Suite Pro, which has all the tools you need to mix, master, and repair audio. Also, you can get 10% off all other software using the promo code FRET10. That's F-R-E-T-1-0. All of this is at isotope.com, I-Z-O-T-O-P-E.com. Hey, we'd like to take a minute to thank our sponsor, Isotope, makers of software and plugins for audio repair, mixing, and mastering. We use Isotope products here at the High Gain. It's an important part of how we've been able to bottle pure podcast gold week after week. And guess what? Isotope offers one free month of Music Production Suite Pro, which has all the tools you need to mix, master, and repair audio. Also, you can get 10% off all other software using the promo code FRET10. That's F-R-E-T-1-0. All of this is at isotope.com, I-Z-O-T-O-P-E dot com. If cutting-edge synths and studio-quality effects are your thing, they are, right? Our friends over at Native Instruments have a deal for you. The complete 14 Select Collection contains 18 premium instruments and effects, 8 expansions sound packs, and more than 15,000 sounds. Legendary vintage synths, sampled percussion, pianos and organs, there's even a sampled Rickenbacker 4003 bass. Put a little round reverb in there, add some replica delay, I smell a hit. Go to nativeinstruments.com and use the promo code PODCAST to save 50% on Native Instruments' complete 14 Select software bundle. Hey, it's me, Ed Peterson. And it is me, John Kiltica. Hey, John, how are you? Oh, I'm especially good today, Ed. Really? Yes. Yeah. Is it the mustache? The mustache is in fine form. Yeah, it's coming along real good. Yeah. It's the High Game Podcast. It is the High Game Podcast. We talk about semi-hollow body guitars. Today? Exclusively. Yes. Where are we recording from? Beautiful West Seattle, Washington. Oh, man. You had to drive down and pick me up. Yeah, springtime in Seattle Mm -hmm. does not really give you a reprieve from the rain. Nope. We'll see that in July. Yeah. I could have walked. But I didn't really want to sit here soaking wet. Yeah, and why would you be super wet? Listeners will be interested to know that the only people that really use umbrellas in Seattle are tourists. Yeah, I'm certain there's an umbrella in our house. But I guess it's probably for guests because I've never used it. Yeah, we must have one somewhere. Yeah, right? I was watching some show that took place in London. Mm -hmm. And all the London people were walking around with umbrellas. You know. I can't make any particular character judgments, but... (laughs) It seems like you're trying. Yeah. So thank you for coming and picking me up. You're welcome. (laughs) Sort of forgot it was our fifth year anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Five years. That's so crazy. Is it... Jesus. Is it... Is it our five year by the date or by the episode? By the episode. By the episode. Okay. Yeah. What would the date be? Is it May or? I think it was maybe May 11th. Something like that. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations us. <laughs> we didn't really do anything. Except I did get you a present. You did? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You hand that thing over to me. Here you go. Okay. I'll... Oh, you wrapped it and everything. Yeah. Can I tear the paper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. I know. Did you wrap this thing really? Yeah. Oh, my God, Ed. Look, it's the traditional fifth year anniversary gift of wood. Wood. Yeah, it's a little jewelry box that I thought you could put picks in. That is really great. There's some shit laying around our house. I don't know. Because I did not realize. And then I went out on the internet and had to look up what's the traditional five year anniversary gift. And it's wood. Or silverware. I guess I could have brought you a spoon. What'd you get me? I got you wood, too. Oh, great. Yeah. A wooden hand with its middle finger extended. Yeah. 
That's pretty good. That is an art model. Yeah. You put the fingers in different places and then draw it. Someone had a dog or a cat, I would say, because all the tips of the fingers are chewed up. They kind of are. Yeah. Beverages. Yes, Ed, beverages. Yeah. I got a crow mug with some coffee in it. That's a must. I, too, have a black coffee because it's required. Yep. You've got something in a bottle there. Yeah. It's a Klaus Toller original non-alcoholic beer. I've had these a couple of times. I think maybe on the show. What do you uh, think of those compared to the Athletic Brewing Company ones? I like them both, but TBH? That means to be honest. Yeah, yeah, for the kids. Yeah. I'm really into the Klaus dollars. What about you? What else do you have? Oh, I have a culture pop soda. Mm. Apparently, according to the can, it yeah. is both fizzy and gutsy. Ooh. Because it's probiotic. Mm-hmm. Gutsy. I get it. This one is strawberry and rhubarb. That's a great combo. Yeah. I'm kind of a rhubarb guy. At my day job. Sure. They have fancy hand soap. Rhubarb hand soap? Yes. Huh. It smells great. You love it. It's embarrassing, kind of. I come out of the bathroom smelling my hands. My coworkers are wondering, what the hell is he doing? Don't worry about my hands. Worry about your hands. Rhubarb soap. Right. What was in the beverage song? Oh, yeah. Let me put that back on for you just to... Uh... Ed was kind enough to bring the Chase Bliss Generation Loss Mark II. Yeah, the new one. Because he knows how much I love the glitchy stuff. You can get a lot of interesting stuff out of the Gen Loss. The thing that's really great about the Generation Loss, first impression, Yeah. it has a failure knob. Yep. Like playing back a tape and it just drops out. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, that's what that was. The Gen Loss. That is a great pedal. Should we dive into this guitar? Yeah. This is a semi-hollow body heritage. This is the H535. It's got Seymour Duncan, Seth Lover humbuckers. Oh, okay. Yeah, our man Seth Lover. We lost him. Before we lost him, he did these pickups, so that's nice. Two volume, two tones. <laughs> so that's nice. Yeah, and a pickup selector switch. Did he for sure work with... Seymour Duncan on those pickups? He for sure did. Great. What's up with Heritage? I know a couple things, John. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit I know. The Heritage stuff and the Harmony stuff are made in the same factory. Yeah, the original Gibson factory in Kalamazoo, Michigan. I think that's what I know about them. Okay, well, I can tell you how this all came about. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Clearly, it's a 335 style guitar. Yes. Our model we have here today is brand new, and it is a sunburst, like a darker tobacco sunburst. Yep. It's brand new. It's brand new. Okay. We know that Gibson these days uh -huh. is in Tennessee. Nashville. Yes. They shut down the Kalamazoo plant in 1984 and moved everything to Nashville. Mm -hmm. As you might guess, there were a handful of longtime employees there that had no intention of moving to Nashville. Hmm. No thanks, we're staying here. Yeah. Chief among them were three people, Jim Derlew, Marv Lamb, and J.B. Motes. Marv Lamb and J.B. Motes, those are a couple of killer names. Killer is right. Oh, oh both of them. Our man J.B. Motes was driving his wife to a doctor's appointment in 2015. Yeah. And out of nowhere had a seizure. Oh, no. And ran them into a telephone pole. Oh, no. Ignominious. That is terrible. I don't know how our man Marv went. One more time, Marv Lamb. Good name. And J.B. Motes. Both of those names. Yeah. I mean, no shade on the Derlu name. That's a good name, too. Yeah, Derlu is pretty good. Yeah. 
So these three get together. Okay. Once Gibson's gone and they think, what would it take? How much money? What kind of gear? How many people? If we wanted to start our own guitar company and just keep going. Yeah. They wanted to bring as many of the employees on as possible that had been there. They did it. They bought the factory. The building. Yeah, they bought the Gibson factory. A lot of the equipment was left. Sure. Let's not screw with taking these however many thousands of pound machines yeah. that were old. and Yeah. So they were in better position than they thought they were going to be moving into that building with so much of the gear still there. They were up and running in 85 by the time they incorporated and everything. Okay. 40,000 square feet. That's how big that original factory was. That's enough room to do some stuff. I would think so. What did these three dudes do at Gibson? Everything. I think all three of them started in the 50s. Maybe you start out sanding stuff. Mm -hmm. If you do well enough, they'll let you actually cut the wood before you sand it. They work their way up. Yeah. Tell me shit about Kalamazoo. I don't know anything. Well, I don't know if this has anything at all to do with Heritage Guitars. Mm -hmm. We mentioned in 1984 they bought the building. Yep. In 1982, just two years prior, a group of Kalamazoo residents attempted to secede from the union. <laughs> they wanted to form what they were going to call the Republic of Kalamazoo. Now, hmm. was our man Marv? Instrumental. History does not tell us. We have to assume yes, I yeah. guess. We, we have to assume if they were there, they were deep-seated. Secessionists. Yeah, allegedly. Kalamazoo was once known as Celery City. Oh, that's cool. Is that because they grew celery? It once was the largest celery producer in the country. Man, you got to think, at some point, they had largest celery production and probably largest guitar manufacturer in the nation. Are you implying that at some point Gibson was in bed with Big Celery? I wasn't exactly making that connection, but <laughs> now that you say it, yeah. At a lot of companies, they have free coffee or donut day on yeah. Fridays. Ants on a log. Exactly. All the celery you can eat. With peanut butter and raisins. Ugh, ants on a log. You could add to that. Yes. Because it was also home at one point to the world's largest pickle factory. <laughs> That's great. It's probably unfair, but into the 2000s, Detroit sort of falls apart and manufacturing leaves. Did Kalamazoo have a very similar fate where they lose their celery factory? They lose their pickle factory. Man. Gibson says, I'm out of here. We're going to Tennessee. Good for Marv. Stick it out, baby. Yeah. Make Kalamazoo great again. The pickle factory, at its height, mm -hmm. was producing 250,000 barrels of pickles a year. I don't know how many pickles are in a barrel. Somewhere probably between one and half a million per barrel. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Those pickle dudes? Yeah. Bunch of cowards, right? The factory says we're leaving. We're yeah. out of here. Where was the pickle man? How come no one stuck it out and said, hey, we'll buy this factory. We'll keep making these tasty, tasty pickles. Cowardly big pickle. The worst. Five years we've been talking about guitars like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, insightful guitar history. Well, against this backdrop of waning agriculture and seething secessionist sentiment heritage guitars opens up in 1985 in I the old it. gibson factory isn't that pretty cool i think it's very cool that they're potentially still using machines from the early turn of the century yeah that craftsmanship i'm very into that's what they wanted to emphasize at the time this happened gibson was kind of over producing Sure. It was yes. the Norlin era, and they were looking to cut costs by mechanizing things more. They wanted to streamline that production. Right, which is probably all the more reason to go to Tennessee and not bring any of that equipment, because they were probably using the most modern stuff. Yeah, and our guys Jim, Marv, and JP, their biggest concern was that these things be 100% handmade. Mm -hmm. The fact that you would get, by doing that, variations in instruments, they thought was fine. If from instrument to instrument they were slightly different, 
because they were 100% handmade, yeah, that was swell by them. I'm pretty swell with that. They insisted on it. And they very quickly established themselves as makers of very high-end instruments. Yeah. As a semi-hollow, this yeah. has a block of mahogany running down the center of it. Yep. Laminated maple body. Yep. And the fretboard is rosewood. I must say this rosewood is great looking. It's nice and dark. Yeah. Let me show you what this thing sounds like. Yeah. Okay. Should we go as necky as we can? A little jazzy. A little jazzular. Let's go as bridgy as we can get. Love it. I'll bet that bridge sounds really great with that generation oh. loss. Yeah. I think that pedal's so cool. I do too. Hit me with a chord. And then go to the neck. How much smoother this is. Like in a great way. Now go to the bridge again. That does sound good. Yeah. Let's put a little... Uh... Yeah, that is nice. Who designed the 335? The 335 was a Ted Banger. Classic. Do you know who designed this? This was Marv. Marv Lamb. My man. He wanted it to be what he considered an alternative to the ES-335. I think he had a hand in all their offerings. What else did he make? The H-150, which is similar to this, but a single cutaway. Is that like a Florentine cutaway, I wonder? No, it's a Venetian cutaway. Okay. The Golden Eagle, which was their top-of-the-line jazz box. Okay. The Super Eagle. Ooh. And the 535 that we've got here. My guy Marv. I wonder where Marv, as a name, Marvin, where does that stack rank in baby names? 2022, it was the 8,592nd most common first name for a baby. I think we got to bring Marv back. That's a lot of names that hit above Marv. What's number five since this is our fifth anniversary? <coughs> oh, <coughs> girls. Number five, Sophia. Okay. Boys, number five, Mateo. Mateo. That's a great candidate for shortening. Matt. Teo. Tay Tay. Tater. <laughs> yeah. You ask me when Marv was designing this stuff. Yeah. Was he thinking about the 335? specifically or not and i told you that he was looking to make what he called an alternative to it we've already mentioned that the pick guard and the headstock are different but structurally these are all the same that would make you wonder if that leaves them open to yeah litigation litigation or, right strange history there okay they're going about their business until 1991 when they stand before Mm -hmm. They being Heritage and Gibson, mm -hmm. the U.S. Trademark Trial and Appeal Board, each having their own issues. Gibson saying, you're ripping our shit off. Heritage is saying, well, I didn't see that you ever copyrighted the ES-335. They actually settled and they agreed to disagree, which is <laughs> weird. Okay. They each paid their own legal fees and they agreed to maintain the status quo. Heritage yeah. is going to keep building guitars. Gibson's going to keep their thoughts to themselves. Huh. That seems not very Gibson-y. Doesn't it? And Gibson yeah. never made another claim. Against Heritage. Yeah. Specifically. Right. They have a history of being a touch litigious with their body shapes. A little bit. But, Ed. Yeah? Nonetheless, in 2016, Heritage is sold to, of all people, a real estate development group out of Chicago. Perfect. Absolutely flawless. Apparently, Marv and JB and Jim know these fellas. Okay. So they have every faith that they're going to buy into their completely handmade philosophy. And they do. Great. 10 out of 10. Until 2017, a year later. Okay. Band Lab. Our friends at Band Lab. Yes. They come in as majority stakeholders. The factory is left to continue 
what they want to do. Great. We're going to leave you alone. You're doing great. We're going to up distribution and advertising. We're going to try to bring more focus to the heritage to the brand. That's cool. Seems fine. Until 2018. Uh-oh. Parenthetically, BandLab also owns Rolling Stone magazine. <laughs> okay. Heritage guys will keep making guitars, but maybe we bring in a couple of CNC machines now. Oh. It's not going to be 100% handmade. Yeah. Like it used to be. And also, this is a big-ass factory. Yeah. Why don't we put a hotel in there? What? Boutique, music-related hotel. Maybe a recording studio people can Ooh, record in. That sounds lovely. A performance venue, perhaps? Is this space that was just underutilized anyway? I don't know. I don't even know if they did it. Just plans. They had designs. That's what they wanted to do. Okay. I guess on the face of it, if you're thinking about the cultural attractiveness of your town. Yeah. And you've got this factory that has such a rich musical history. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. Giving some weird benefit of the doubt, which I rarely do because that's not my job. <laughs> if there were like a small boutique hotel in the Heritage plant, you go stay in this hotel and there's a restaurant and you can go into the factory. Here's all the stuff that's completed. Would you like to buy one? Like a retail area? Yeah, yeah. Dude is just QA checking this thing. He's just setting it up right now. Do you want it? You want it? Yes, please. That sounds killer. Don't expect anything too fancy. It's going to be difficult finding pickles. The celery days are gone. Yeah. Ants on a log, those are out. So, yeah, I think you're right. Doing that stuff is good for the town. That part of it seems very cool. Yes. Who doesn't want to go spend a couple weeks in Kalamazoo? Celery City? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Meanwhile, mm -hmm. in 2019, mm -hmm. you remember this, KKR takes over Gibson. Mm -hmm. They decide they want to renew their claims of oh. infringement on everybody and their sister. Okay. They claim that Heritage has been violating their trademark for decades, and they demand that Heritage cease business. Sure. The Heritage designs were unchanged since that 1991 decision the status quo decision. Mm -hmm. So any claims that they had changed something to make it more Gibson-like, Heritage felt were spurious. Sure. So, of course, they refused to cease. Love it. Gibson disagreed, but oddly, did not sue. I mean, they had bigger fish to fry, right? They're going after everyone at this point. In response to that, Heritage says that they are, quote, extremely pleased with the way in which this matter has been resolved and are excited about continuing the history of guitar building at 225 Parsons. That's Ooh. the street where the factory is. Hell yeah. And you'd think that's over. <laughs> but Heritage must think that there's something about Gibson not to trust. That's weird. So in 2020, Ed, mm -hmm. Heritage files what they call a defensive lawsuit. Great. Against Gibson in federal court. They claim that Gibson was threatening them with legal action, and they allege that Gibson's new ownership was harassing them. That is so out of character for the Gibson yeah. I know. So they're like, hey, they're threatening us. Mm -hmm. An agreement was reached. Both parties agreed to the dismissal of all claims. Maybe Gibson's just going to leave them alone forever now. I'm not certain about that because I'm not a lawyer, but I'm glad for Heritage. I am too. The way this thing sounds, Ed, yeah. if there is CNC involved in it, it's okay. This plays great. With this guitar, the attention to detail and the quality control of the Heritage stuff is just going to be out of the box way higher. I think so, too. You gotta try it. Try and decide. Is it hello? It looks like a 335, Ed. Yeah. But it's clearly not. It's made in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Yep. Where the 335 was birthed at the time of pickles and celery. Mm hmm Back then. Yeah. The Heritage H535, buy or deny? You go first. Buy. Yeah? I think this is a buy. Okay. If you want a semi-hollow body. Yep. 
I don't see any reason not to buy this. You have any weird caveats? I actually don't. It's just very comfortable. Yeah. I don't think I'm in the market for a semi-hollow guitar. That said, having that harmony silhouette that came out of the same factory and just knowing that I love that guitar, if I were going to buy a semi-hollow 335-esque guitar, I would lean this, the heritage. My confidence in what the guitar would be like would be way higher. Agreed. And I'm pretty sure you can get this in Blackhead. Then, strong buy. So I am going to take lots of pictures of it. Yeah. And we'll put them up on the interwebs. Next to some wood and silverware. Because it's our five-year anniversary. Five-year anniversary, very important. Congratulations, Ed. Oh my gosh, John. Yeah. And we are still devout members of the Ruinous Media Network of Music-Related Podcasts. Out here in the Great Pacific Northwest. Yes, Cascadia. Yeah. How are Joe and the boys doing? Uh, I think Joe and the boys are doing pretty swell. Yeah? Yeah. Everything's great. Okay. Let's come back next week. We'll do it again. I can't wait. Year six. Love it. All right, then. Okay. Bye, Ed. Bye. Bye.